If you look at almost any sales pages, webinars, videos, advertisements, landing pages, direct mail ads, emails, any copy that's effective, you probably start to see the same structure. It's the same structure that basically every copywriting course teaches. If you talk with top copywriters, they talk about the same structure, maybe with slightly different words, but this basic structure comes through almost always because it works. There are exceptions and you can make other structures work very well, but this is the safe one. This is by far the, this is definitely the one you should start with almost always, unless you specifically have a really good idea of what else you could do. So there's five points to it or five steps to it. The first step is to join in on their conversation. So not necessarily a conversation they would have with anyone else, but rather a conversation, specifically a conversation they're having in their heads. Uh, there's two options. Either you can basically chime in with what they already believe. So point out that, yes, I agree with you, like validate their thoughts about something. Or you can try to be the contrarian. You can try to be specifically provocative. The first option is a lot safer, and unless you really know what you're doing, then I, I would definitely stick with uh, just joining in with what they're already thinking, with basically validating their thoughts. Uh, the idea is that if people aren't already thinking about something, then it's pretty hard to make them interested in it. It can be done, it can work well, but it's a risk, and it's usually an unnecessary risk. Uh, the topic that you join or the topic of the conversation you join doesn't really matter as much as long as it's clearly connected to what you're going to talk about next. Uh, but as long as you can make that connection, uh, you can make a lot of different things work. The second step is to describe their current situation and specifically from their perspective. You're not trying to give them some more clear objective view of where they are, but rather specifically what do they see? How do they see? How, what do they experience? What do they believe about their current situation? The goal is to make them understand that you understand where they are. If they don't believe that you understand where they are, it's going to be really hard for them to believe that you could tell them how to get to anything better, because if you don't know where they start from, then it's hard to give them good dis uh, directions. The third step is then to describe where they want to get to. And again, the goal is to be as close to what they're thinking about as possible, not objective, not improve their idea, not correct it. You can do those things later to some degree, but rather just stick with what people are already thinking about, where they want to get to, how they would describe those things. And this is the other side of the same equation and in the previous one. If people don't believe that you know where they want to get to, then obviously your directions are going to be wrong because they're trying to direct people to a wrong place. Then we get to the meat of the content or the meat of the sales video or the webinar. Although there are many cases when, for example, in a webinar, this is far too short. So there's just no nothing else than really the pitch, but this should be longer. I think in my webinars, this is usually at maybe 75, 85% of the, the time or something like that. So it can be a lot longer. But yeah, the point is to tell people how will they get from point A, where they are now, to point B, where they want to get to. Uh, the level of detail varies, especially on context. In a short advertisement, for example, you might not say almost anything about this. Uh, but in the context of, a, let's say, a sales video or a longer sales page or a webinar or uh, in a speech or something, then you have plenty of space for actually telling people how to do it or what are the steps, at least. If not how to do it, then at least what to do or what they need to accomplish to move forward. The next step then, the last step, is to show how do these things fit together? Uh, or how does your offer fit in? How does it enable those things that you just taught them to do? Or how does it make it easier or better or faster or less stressful? Or how does it enable better results? Or how does it reduce risk? Or whatever it is that your offer does. Uh, it doesn't have to do the entire way there. It, it doesn't have to take them all the way from where they are now to where they want to get to, although that's generally the best option. But yeah, that's the part where you actually do the pitch. If you've done the previous parts well, then you don't have to do a lot more than just show how this fits in. Show what it is that it does and why it's good. 
how it's different and so on. You don't have to do some crazy hard pitch to make people buy. But yeah, that's the five step structure that really, if you look at effective copy, you generally see that structure, more or less. Uh, it doesn't have to be at all defined, though. Uh, you can often see that like the, the lines are very much blurred between the steps. Uh, and that's not a problem at all. Uh, you can also kind of jump back and forth between them, but especially if you're just getting into copywriting or just trying to write a sales page for your own business and that's not your, like mar marketing and copywriting isn't your expertise, then just try to stick to the, to the structure. You can start by first just making a list of potential topics or conversations that they are probably having uh, in their heads that you could join, things that relate to what you're going to then talk about next, things that you might be able to connect to the next parts. Uh, the connection can be obvious, it can be very much direct. They are thinking about a problem they are experiencing right now. Yes, you can join that conversation. Then list out, well, things that they would say about their current situation, then list out some things they would say about their dreams, then the rough structure for the steps or the content or the like roadmap from where they are to where they want to get to, and then the offer. Once you have just that general structure down, you can start elaborating and, and just opening it up more and then see how long it ends up being. But if you start with the structure, things get a lot easier. Originally, I meant to share this in just an email that I send every week. It's called Friday Scribbles, uh, obviously sent on Fridays. Uh, in those, I always pick a question or topic that has come up uh, with clients that week or with friends or in my own business and give as practical of an answer as I possibly can so that you can actually just take it, go use it immediately in your business. And the part that a lot of people seem to enjoy the most about those emails is at the end, uh, which is just random tidbits, which is exactly what you would expect. It is very much random things, uh, things that I've found genuinely interesting uh, during the week. Uh, and it really ranges from almost anything to almost anything. Uh, if you're interested, uh, you can go to petersendean.com slash Friday and get those emails. If you go there uh, and join the email list, you can always reply to me and let me know what you thought of this. Or if you have a question, you can ask there. You can also try asking on YouTube comments. I'm not super active there, but I try to check those and, and answer there as well. And you can also reach me at Twitter if you want. I hope to get to talk to you soon.